the Advanced Tech Podcast, providing a spotlight for innovators and disruptors. For links and show notes, and to find out how to sponsor the Advanced Tech Podcast, go to advancedtechmedia.org. You can also find and sponsor us on Patreon. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, please take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating. You can also sponsor us using Bitcoin at advancedtechmedia.org slash sponsor. Welcome to the Advanced Tech Podcast. Um, joining me today is Stack and Ali. If you're comfortable, let's talk a little bit about your backgrounds and then go into the product. So I'm Ali. Uh, we are actually both from Turkey. Uh, we are really close friends. Uh, and I'm the founder of uh, Upkarta. Uh, and I'm a civil engineer by background. I did a master's in the University of Manchester uh, in project management. Then I worked in a construction site uh, for a year. And then like it was very boring. So <laughs> uh, I started a startup with my previous co-founder uh, back in 2013, 14. Uh, and we tried different things in the last seven years. Uh, and last year, uh, March, I did a soft launch uh, of Linda Feed, the previous name of my current startup. From that time, I've been iterating on the product. I've been receiving some fantastic feedback from uh, the early users, the early community. Upkarta, its current name, Upkarta is a platform, a community created platform for discovering, collecting, and sharing great content, essentially. And to achieve it, it mainly relies on the guidance and recommendations of the founders, the builders, uh, the writers, and other creators whom we respect and trust. So in a single platform, you can see the recommendations, the top contents, uh, the collections of your favorite people. Uh, and these people can either be users of the platform or they can be, let's say, external profiles. They do not necessarily need to be users of the platform. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the introduction. And then Stack, how did you get into Bitcoin? What's your, your background in the space? So, uh, well, actually, we kind of got into Bitcoin together. Uh, I had some previous attempts. I have this old computer that has the version 050 on it, uh, of the full node. So, uh, I heard about Bitcoin in 2011, tried to mine it, couldn't mine it. In 2013, I tried to buy it, but I was afraid of this uh, Cyprus-based uh, exchange because it can be a little sketchy mm -hmm. uh, northern cyprus company so i said no i'm not going to get from here then it was in 2007 that we started to get bitcoin kind of together and of course like during those times like uh, it was the beginning of the bull market also and everything was going up in prices and they were like pushing out a lot of projects and we were reading both of us like we were reading a lot of stuff like white papers and everything was like, uh, everything was full of opium. So uh, during that times, actually we said, well, we need something to filter out the noise and uh, we need a platform for people to reach to better content. So I think that was the beginning of Linda Feed or Upkarta with the new name, uh, because the issue is not uh, like, yeah, with, with the technology age and the internet and everything is so easy to access to information but uh, to know which one to follow is the hard time and we all have limited time so yeah so the idea was to have a curated filtered platform for people to learn what they want to learn in a more efficient way so yeah and since after reading a good amount of uh, articles and you know listening to podcasts, we managed to become Bitcoin only because we realized that we were just like they were just marketing the sh uh, shit out of us basically and like pushing us into a lot of like weird stuff. So and now yeah, we are happy holders and stackers. Awesome. So this was, uh, when I said at the very beginning, an impromptu uh, episode, this was unplanned. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to ask you next. Um, I guess 
what do you see your first your first few users uh, like what's your ideal beta release for upcarta yeah by the way it's already live you can use the platform right now it's only exists as a website so like there are no mobile apps currently because i need to use the resources very efficiently so right now it's really easy to build uh, on the web mm -hmm. as a single platform it's really easy to iterate and before reaching the product market fit if you start building on multiple platforms like it will definitely become a hurdle definitely slow your product development process mm -hmm. uh, because like if you're going to launch a new feature then you're going to need to launch that feature on other mobile apps find the product market fit know what you're going to do know what you're going to build and then scale to other platforms at least like it, it works better uh taking into account the resource constraints yeah right now like people like if you're going to spend the next six eight ten hours reading a book or if you're going to spend your next two hours watching a video it better be a good one mm -hmm. so like most people they leave that decision they outsource that decision to algorithms like they just launch they just enter youtube.com and then let's say start watching whatever youtube actually feeds them with in that aspect like that's not a wise decision like if you're going to watch something read something listen to something relying on the people you trust uh, may turn out to be a much wiser. So right now, people who are trying to learn things, who are trying to, let's say, decide on better books, better podcasts, other creators that actually create valuable content, even outside their own existing scopes, let's say, because LindaFeed actually makes this process uh, a lot easier. In that regard, these are the initial aspects, and we have a very limited number of users. So, like, it would be wise to extrapolate like uh, grand theories out of these relatively insignificant number of users. So, but right now, even though we have a very limited number of users, people love the product, mm -hmm. and I think that makes uh, like th th that's really motivating, and I think it's really important for an early stage uh, startup. So yes, that's I think that's about it. Cool. There were not that many platforms that suggested all kind of contents, like uh, academic articles, like regular articles, uh, books and videos and podcasts all at once. It was really hard to find them. So this has that feature actually. Like so, you could find a good yeah. podcast and find a related book to that podcast, for example. Maybe it was mentioned in yes. the podcast, actually. So it makes that jump really easy for the users. Yeah, also uh, another like uh, use case is you can easily make your own digital library by adding not bookmarks, but like bookmark it within the platform. So you can have your own library set up really easily or like for things that you want to listen or watch also. So it's a... It's, uh, yeah, multi-dimensional space in which you can find a lot of resources. What Stack said is very critical. I think like it was one of the insights we had when we were starting out uh, the startup. So when you are on YouTube, uh, YouTube actually shows you the related videos. When you're on Medium, let's say reading an article, Medium actually suggests you or shows you the related articles. Like whenever you're on a platform, platform itself suggests you with the inherent media type that the platform itself is actually, yeah. Like in that regard, Upcrater, like whenever you are interested in a podcast, you do not only see the related podcasts, but you also see related books, related uh, articles, and in this day and age, I think like books, they are a great source of learning stuff, but they're only one source of learning new things. Mm -hmm. And I think like maybe you heard of Goodreads. So Goodreads is great with books, but Upcarta Goodreads should be in this day and age with this diverse, with all these people uh, relying on different like some people, they, they love listening. Some people actually combine listening, watching, reading. And probably like all people, maybe some people prefer reading, some people prefer watching, but all people probably combine all these different methods in different 
weights, let's say. Cool. So how does content discovery work? Is it entirely user generated or is it is there like a machine learning algorithm behind it? Or will there be perhaps in future future versions? Right now it's user generated. Actually, like people they recommend content and to recommend content, they first search for the content, uh, for the existing content. And if it doesn't exist, they actually just add the link, add the title. Uh, and in that way, that content gets generated within the system. By the way, uh, Upkarta is actually referring to these original sources. And if it's a YouTube video or if, it's a, if the content has an embeddable player, then like you can just stay within the platform and watch the video or listen to podcast. But if it's a book, let's say, then it directs you to the, let's say, Amazon page of that book. And right now, actually, curators, they recommend the content they like, and each person's feed actually consists of these recommendations. But these recommendations, they may be, let's say, by the people who are users of the platform, but they can also be, let's say, someone who is dead or someone like an, a profile existing outside the platform if um, buffett let's say recommends a book in a video or in a podcast uh, he attended it and if that actually content gets created it gets added on upcarta then actually people who are following uh warren buffett see that recommendation on their feed as well so it works both ways and machine oh, learning sure. is definitely a great area to to extend upon in the future definitely you know, that's one of the reasons I want you guys to get in contact with because you are looking for something in AI machine learning and it would be, of course, beneficial. Also, like one other thing that the Upcarta has is the collections. I think that's uh, also like a high value stuff. So the collections is, for example, Austin Allred from huh, Lambda School. Okay. From so Lambda School, the yeah. list of like the most Lambda inspiring Lambda books. And it consists of 14 resources, 14 different books. So we can have it as a collection or, you know, for example, Jameson Lop has this How Bitcoin Works collection with 13 resources, starting with Explain Bitcoin Like I'm 5, Bitcoin 101, and Inventing Bitcoin. At the books he recommended on Bitcoin videos also. So that's another collection and collections make things really simple for the users because it helps users to connect to the curators or, you know, high profile people in the business that they are interested in. Cool. Um, I I'm think really this familiar. is a great point. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, by the way, there may be a delay in my voice. Sorry about that. I think that. there is. No, it's okay. It's all good. Uh, I was just going to add, I think like what Stack gave as an example. Uh, was a great one. There are lots of valuable information sitting on silos around the web. Uh, and James Lope is a great example in this. Uh, he has his own resources for, let's say, getting started to Bitcoin, like learning about the history of Bitcoin and all these collections on different contexts, different themes, actually. And this is just one example, but these collections are actually, there, there are all sorts of collections on, let's say, people's own blogs, websites, they sometimes share these collections on Twitter, but they do not connect with each other. Let's say if there's a book, let's say three of these collections, which are created by the people you admire, you respect, you are unaware of this mission. But on Opcarta, uh, if these collections get added to the system, uh, then you see like this is a very high value signal for you. Like these three guys, few people that you trust, they all included this content, whether it's a book or a podcast in their collections. So maybe it's worth checking it out. Yeah. Interesting. So it sounds like you could use uh, kind of wisdom of the crowd to determine what are actual good sources versus what is maybe recommended by a machine algorithm um, or perhaps an overly critical content moderator. <laughs> the new model of internet is like advertisements of everything so like in order to sell you need to make an advertisement mm -hmm. and that model is not i think it's not a very high value model because like you get paid to sell uh, you pay to sell and 
Then there's a conflict of interest there. So I don't think this will exactly have that model in mind. So maybe, I don't know, in the future, there, there may be sponsors for some topics, but there's not going to be any uh, yeah, marketing for new material, basically. So I think that's one of the uh, challenges with um, any kind of, I guess any kind of monetization strategy. So many platforms now that are free just use their, their user count and user base and uh, time on platform as monetization tools. So um, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with using advertising as monetization. I think it almost frees up your users to be able to be more authentic versus having to kind of have the, like the infomercials that you would have in like the non-traditional advertising as you're kind yeah. of seeing with influencers. No, I was saying like, you know, in Amazon, you can push up your listing when you pay it, this won't be like that it will be like more like uh, upvote based by the crowd by the community instead of paying to uh, appear on a higher level or something yes it has that aspect in it but it, it also has this aspect like if there's a book on amazon with lots of let's say five star reviews maybe like i may not find that book interesting mm -hmm. and maybe someone i deeply respect that person did not recommend that book or maybe like we can actually think of the opposite example there's this book with let's say three stars three uh, in average let's mm -hmm. say but there's this one person whom i deeply respect and that person actually uh definitely recommends that book like that may override all the uh previous reviews ratings mm -hmm. of the whole population because that one person whom I follow may be definitely contrary uh, in that regard. And maybe the whole population uh, actually is wrong on the subject. Like that may be one example. So in this regard, uh, Carta, yes, it actually has this popularity uh, based on, let's say, the number of recommendations or recommenders. Yes. And in that regard, it's very uh, wisdom of the crowds. Mm -hmm. But also, what you see on your feed depends mainly uh, on whom you follow. Let's say if there's a, there's a book with lots of uh, recommendations, and if you're not following any of the recommenders, probably you're not going to see that uh, book on your feed. So like what you see on your feed is an action of your own interests, actually. And I started thinking of this like a social backlinking system. Mm -hmm. rather than a general backlinking system. I think it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I like it. Thanks. <laughs> and there are AI uh, capabilities that can be added in the future. Uh, like you can create this model where this function searches through the web and different channels uh, in Substack, on Medium, uh, mm -hmm. on people's own blogs. Uh, and they can actually, like this model can search for uh, recommendations from these people and they can actually, like these recommendations can get added to the system automatically. So you have this one platform where actually it's fetching all the high signal recommendation, uh, like social recommendations actually from all around the web and consisting this one giant uh, guiding system using the AI and relying less on the human creation part. Yeah. Interesting. I remember tweeting something a while back about, I think it was on Mastodon actually. There's so much interesting content out there, especially the non-indexed sites. So uh, it would be interesting to create like some kind of a crawler that actually looks at all the sites existing, like dark web included, um, and is able to, to create kind of a knowledge base without doing that in a creepy way <laughs> like, not in a way to kind of you know like actual actual discovery I'm sure there'd probably be a way to opt out but I was thinking you know like go forward like I don't know 30 40 years if I were an artificially intelligent bot that might be an interesting way for me to discover what actually is versus just kind of what's being presented to me on the you know the three percent of the web that we see so that's pretty cool I like it you know what's actually interesting when you think about it? I'm so sure that there are so many hidden gems, uh, mm -hmm. books or like things that content that was produced and it was ahead of its time and people didn't get it or it would be really interesting to have access to those stuff. Maybe like we'll see. I think that with time we'll, we'll get more access to more 
Yeah, this is a concept called recency bias. Have you heard of this term, recency bias? People, like, they can't actually consume recently created content. And actually, like, this whole idea of Lindley Effect was one of the inspirations behind the name Linda Feed. So, like, people tend to consume recent stuff, but, like, most of the recent stuff actually is of no value. Like, if you, like, let's say, read a book uh, which is still, like, sticking around, like, which is still referred by the people, like, read by people, and written, let's say, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, like, it's just a sign that actually that book, it endured the test of time. And... Mm -hmm. Like people are still finding it relevant. So in that regard, like most of the things, most of the news articles, most of the uh, recent content, it's just ephemeral. You just read it, consume it to be relevant, up to date with what's going on in the world. But like, if you just don't read it, probably you're not going to lose it. Uh, so like Patrick Collison, like founder of Stripe, like he was mentioning this uh, recency bias on media consumption. And he was actually, he tends to choose older books, uh, older content, mm -hmm. uh, when consuming new things. I think that's a good heuristic. Of course, like, it may fail. Like, there needs to be some people trying new things all the time. Like, it's a driver of progress. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good heuristic, I think. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's good. So I think this might actually be a way to discover content that if you've got kind of a trusted network, um, you can trust that network effect and perhaps find good content, not just popular content. So, for example, what do you use to discover discover new content in general? Like, I was also thinking about what I use and then I realized that I use friends. I use, of course, Bitcoin Twitter because people mm -hmm. actually read there. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you heard of it, like uh, the jo Jordan Peterson case. Like... Literally, they were discussing his book, and then he started to dive into the Bitcoin rabbit hole as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of good value there. And we were also thinking of adding tweets, mentioning books, and like tweet storms about some certain books. And that could also be a good signal for a lot of the users because the search function is not my favorite in Twitter, for example. It's it gets hard after a while to find certain stuff. So It's, it's so filtered as well, too. Um, I think that's one of the big frustrations. And then there's that whole SEO game. So, you know, you look at 10 years ago, if somebody was really, really good with their SEO, uh, maybe their site is ranking high, but maybe it's, it's not all that valuable. So that's uh, kind of an interesting thing. Um, we're going to run out of time. Yeah. Um, I see that there's only just uh, got about five minutes left. So where can people find this um, up, Carter, first of all? And where can they where can they find you on Twitter? They can actually enter www.upcarta.com. U P C A R T A dot com. First of March, it's going to be live on the new site. And I'm not very active on Twitter, mm -hmm. but I'm not actively tweeting. But they can just find me at A L I C A N V E R G I N. Alijan Vergin. That's my Twitter handle. Awesome. I think you need to rebrand your uh, Twitter Name. username. <laughs> Name. <laughs> I think I, I switched it to 1971 bubble a long time ago because it was a big bubble uh, to switch to fiat currency. So it's much easier now. I'm not a random Star Wars robot anymore. Sometimes that's the best option on the internet is being a, a random robot. Random robot. <laughs> <laughs>